Tiger and Crane Episode 7 begins, where they are moving to the Sorcerer Exam. This exam is crucial for everyone. While going there, Chang Kang falls into it because three sisters beat him. These sisters have beaten him like pulp because he is indulging in the same business as they were doing. Soon, Kai Zio's striking smartness compelled them to look at him. They even consider Kai Zio to be their dream man. Before they continue their idle conversation, the elder's council son, Cheng, arrives. He is full of arrogance and only interested in flirting with girls. Right now, he is in royal sorcerer exams only for his father's connection. Besides that, he doesn't have yet to have a single attribute to participate in this essential exam. By watching his vanity, Hu Zai has decided not to leave him alone if he dared to torment someone. Tense about Hu Zai, Kai Zio asks him not to invite any trouble for them. On the other hand, as Hu Zai expected, Cheng demands royal treatment by stepping inside the inn. However, other participants weren't bothered about his presence and were busy with their tasks. One of the participants presented pastries to everyone and she offered them to also provide him. Chen, whose sole interest is beauty, tries to hold her hand with evil intentions. In confusion, the tray falls, and beauty asks him to behave. Without realizing his blunder, he accuses the beauty of stealing his jade pendant. Beauty is shunned by listening to accusation, and denying of watching his pendant. At Cheng's order, guards have caught her and are about to search her. Before he can do something evil, Zio Yunzi steps forward to protect the girl. As Zio Yunzi himself stepped inside the matter, the guard left her alone. Still, Cheng is persistent in checking on her. So, Shachin finds the jade pendant in her outfit when she checks her belongings. She is looking at this with an open mouth because Cheng frames her. Cheng, an expert in framing others, has secretly placed this pendant in her clothes. As she is proven guilty, Zio Yunzi has decided not to interfere in this matter by remaining silent. Now, it's Cheng's turn to make the opportunity available. To sort out this matter, he gives her an offer to spend some memorable time with him, and he can smoothly let this matter go. Before she replies, Hu Zai has arrived to set her free from this devil. Zhu Hai introduces them to legendary ancient artifacts that can identify who the real culprit is. Cheng is dumb enough to trust his trick. With her crafty skills, Zhu Hai has stopped the artifact on Cheng. Consequently, everyone considers him guilty, and he prefers to move from here. This matter is taken to Tiangang Hall, where he can prove guilty. The Shachin shows his gratitude to Hu Zai. It's been a while since Yan Ran reached out to take Zhu Hai and Kai Zio with her. Kai Zio desires to meet with his father after this exam. Therefore, he hasn't any option except to go with them. Aside from this, Zhao Xin is worried about them and wants to step into Tiangang Hall. Contrary to her expectations, she is confronted by Wu Lin. Anger burst out from her body, and she unshielded her sword to knock him down. But Yu Kian holds her hand because this exam can disqualify them if she dares to hurt him. Wu Lin warns them she can't step inside until he is here. In the royal court, Kai Zio's father humiliates him for delaying the royal pearl. Due to his mistake, he has put the lives of Kinquan village in danger. Hu Zai is also with them and unable to tolerate his friend's insult. He withstands Kai Zio's father, who will severely punish Kai Zio severely for not killing Hu Zai, and taking out the red pearl by tearing apart Hu Zai's body. Hu Zai raises the point that his life isn't important, but those villagers are. Also, he is not bothered about Ryan village and Babao town's people. So, how can he be right? On the contrary, Kai Zio considers Hu Zai his friend, so how can he kill him? When their heart is about to melt, Yan Ran turns the table. She discloses the nine tails, which are part of Hu Zhu, and his tail is hidden in his abdomen. Listening to this, father strikes him with his powers that have removed the furba. By removing the tail, they look at the tail and consider it threatening. Because his tail is the source of 10,000 energy, the guard has confined him with their dominant power. Seeing his friend in trouble, Kai Zio begs for his life. Infuriated by his words, his father wants to kill him when he is born. But they don't know whom they have messed with because Hu Zai has broken all the powerful chains around him. Watching Hu Zai's upper hand, Master steps in to obliterate Zhu Hai. Zhu Hai is protected by his mother's tail, so how can they hurt him? This tail has pushed him away. Before Master counter-attack, Mei Fairy arrives and reprimands them for not looking at her Furba. She puts Furba in his body again and takes responsibility. As Mei Fairy is with Hu Zai, none is there to mess with her. Kai Zio supports him by calling his old master who assures them that Hu Zai is upright. On the other hand, she demands Kai Zio's punishment severely because he has forgotten his responsibility for a while. Kai Zio's father, who is already prepared to punish him, orders his servant to strike him 30 times. As he is punished according to the order, Hu Zai revolts by watching the blood spilled from Kai Zio's mouth. 
whose eye is taken outside because he is creating a disturbance. After flogging him, he is thrown in prison for three days. According to the command, Kai Zio is imprisoned and jumps back to the past. Here, he and Yan Ran are assigned the task of killing deer. By watching their innocence, Kai Zio is unable to kill them. On the contrary, Yan Ran killed these deer by aiming at the arrows, and she is insulting him for not killing a single. If this continues, then he will lose and will have to bear the consequences. As a result, Kai Zio has faced failure, and his father considers him weak. Even Yan Ran provokes his father to strike him hard. His father strikes the hunter once when he loses his senses. Soon, something in his eyes starts gleaming, and another daring soul appears from his inner side. Kai Zio holds the hunter when his father tries to beat him again and justifies his action. He hasn't killed the deers because they are naive, and they should protect them. But his father still considers him a failure and asks him to kneel. Just then, Hu Zai steps inside the prison where Kai Zio is located. He is here to be free, but it's a capital crime. So, he doesn't permit him to do so and calls Old Master, who takes him out. At the same time, Kai Zio's guard arrives and updates him about the outside situation. Day by day, sorcerers are kidnapped, and there is no trace of them. Even they are unable to figure out their dead bodies, which is a sign of impending danger. In the private room of Kai Zio's father, the first master humiliates Kai Zio's father for punishing his grandson severely. But he is scared of his seats that can be lost if he doesn't obey his seniors. He annoys her, and the first master is also moving ahead to free his grandson by taking responsibility. Getting inside the prison, she cures his grandson by creating a magical bowl. After that, she takes him outside and assigns him a task to sort out the problem of missing sorcerers. This severe issue can affect the royal sorcerer exam. Thus, it needs to be sorted out soon. While talking, Yan Ran interrupts them and challenges Kai Zio in the royal sorcerer exam. She has a firm belief that she is going to defeat him. Leaving the prison, Hu Zai meets with Zhao Xin and informs her about Kai Zio's severe situation. Her anger bursts out when she hears about him. She knows it's not his fault because he has to knock down demons. By keeping everything aside, they are gathered by Manju Shahua. She is their teacher and informs them about rules and regulations about halls. Also, there is steamy chit-chat between Hu Zai and Cheng, which can be seen. Here, the teacher informs them about collection pavilion records in which he can figure out about the white tiger. He inquires about the tale of the white tiger and the teacher doubts him because he is continuously inquiring about the white tiger. With his smartness, Hu Zai tackles the situation, but Chang jumps in and associates his tail with the white tiger. In fury, Hu Zai is about to punch him, but the teacher holds it and teaches him a lesson. Later, Hu Zai sneaked out of the class to learn about the white tiger. Also, it's not possible, Wang Yu leaves him for a second. He accompanies him and is ready to support him in gaining knowledge by intruding into pavilion. Secretly, they jump inside, and Wang Yu faints the guard by hitting him with a brick. And Zhu Hai changed his appearance as a guard by wearing his uniform. Reaching the lab, he looks at how many people are keeping the records and inquires one of them about White Tiger records. Also, he doesn't allow him to doubt him by saying he is collecting information for the royals. Throughout the book, he goes through about the White Tiger who can bring destruction to the world with immense power. 500 years ago, Kai Wuji eliminated the White Tiger. Before he studied more, Kai Zio arrived and snatched the books from him. Hu Zai is scared enough to death but takes a relief breath by seeing Hu Zai in front of him. He is pleased that Kai Zio is free and well. On the other hand, Kai Zio reprimands him for leaving the class and intruding here. He sent them back to get the class. In the kitchen, Shancha is making pastries for Hu Zai, and a strange personality is keeping an eye on her. Before he steps forward with evil intentions, he is survived by the servant who arrives here. In the dark, Xin Tong is practicing and Wu Lin's humiliating words are resounding in her ears. It motivates him to take revenge from him. By clicking the cake, Shancha moves to Hu Zai's room and offers him pastries. Getting inside the room, Chang's man and Zhao Xin are seen. Zhao Xin also doesn't think staying in the guy's room late at night is appropriate, but she moves forward without taking notice. Meanwhile, Shancha gets outside her room and considers what she makes for Hu Zai next. A mysterious personality doesn't allow him to think further by kidnapping her. The following day, everyone locates her, but there is no clue behind them. Hu Zai and Zhao Xin arrive and are worried about her, because her pastry basket has been found in the way, and her room is flawless as if she didn't sleep. Before they step outside to search for her, Chang arrives and accuses Hu Zai of missing her. He presents his man, who has witnessed Shancha enter her room. Hu Zai daringly accepts but doesn't know where she has gone. His enemy Cheng again frames him by saying Hu Zai has a tail, proving he is a demon. 
Before this matter gets out of hand, Kaizayo arrives and clears Huzai's position and asks them to find her because she can be a huge problem. They all have started to find her, and Hu Zai warns Chang to keep a distance from him. Otherwise, he is not going to leave him. After spending so many hours, they are unable to find her. Even though it's night, Kai Zio orders them to nap. As he has informed the Tiangang Hall, they don't need to worry about her. By obeying his order, everyone moves to their room except Hu Zai. At this time, Kai Zio guards informs him about the mysterious activity here. The sorcerers getting missing are ordinary people who haven't connection with Nobels. According to them, they can figure out who is behind this in the ghost market. This place is renowned for evil deals and tasks. When they have moved, Huzai appears from behind. He also wants to accompany him to ghost market, but Kai Zio forbids him and ask him to take a rest. For showing, Huzai closes his room's door, but he is following him with Wang Yu and Zhao Xin. Soon, he notices their presence and asks them not to follow him. But they prove obstacles and want to help him by figuring out Shansha. Now, he has no option except to take them with him. Like a team, they step forward to Ghost Market, where many people do illegal business without fear. Even red pearl powder is being sold out. With this, they can lose their senses in the blink of an eye. Aside from this, Shansha is in a dark room, and she is bound with handcuffs. After that, they move to Wanchun Pavilion. Firstly, Huzai doubts him, but Kai Zio clears his reputation by revealing his true purpose of coming here. The red light area is the best place where they can get information. They get inside by handing their weapons to a girl, where beautiful girls are dancing. Also, Shancha escapes from this place, and a mysterious person is chasing her. He has caught her and absorbed her powers. Only ugly dead bodies have remnants when a mysterious person hears the girl's name. With the fear of not being caught, he has run away. After the dance, a lucky one will spend time with her. One of the audience members presented luminous pearls produced in the Kayanyu estate. But they have thrown him out because a person will select on the base of the Udambara plant. This plant is withered, and only the person who can bloom it can spend the night with her. Huzai considers it too demanding. Instead, she can have the person by counting on the money. But she has no concern about precious things. Here, Kai Zio clears his misunderstanding that she is a most knowledgeable lady. Therefore, it's said that the person who spends the night with her becomes rich by grabbing the secrets. Now, he has realized how important this woman is. One of the viewers tries to bloom the flower with special water. But nothing happens. At last, Kai Zio stepped in, took the plant into the moonlight and succeeded in blooming it. Even his intelligence has surprised everyone. As a reward, he can spend the night with her. But Hu Zai is not calm, he wants to keep an eye on him, because he doubts the women who can be dangerous to his friend. He tries to peek into the room, but the guard has insulted him and compelled him to leave. In the room, the girl already knows his purpose for coming here. To reveal the kidnapping secret, she puts the condition to spend the night with her. It's against his morals, so he prefers to leave. Before he goes, she explains that she is kidding. Both need to discuss this matter while sitting. Aside from this, Guzai moves to the fortune teller and inquires about the problem that he is dealing with. When he throws the dice, Huzai can see a white tiger in front of his eyes. It discloses that this fortune teller knows everything that he wants to know. Next, he inquires about the white tiger location. In response, he shows the card in which the white tiger and wolf demon are in the picture. He has understood a connection between the white tiger and the wolf demon. So, he asks about the wolf demon, but he quiets him. Kai Zio's guard has arrived, and the fortune teller turns their attention to them. When Huzai looks back, he realizes the fortune teller has vanished. To take them, he moves to Kai Zio to Mu Dan's room. On the other hand, Mu Dan tells him that she will talk to him about the sorcerer case if he wins the chess match with her. They start playing, and Mu Dan loves to spend time with him, because she has fallen for him. As a result, the chess game is tied, and she has decided to disclose the secrets tomorrow. Listening to this, he burst out angrily and decided to go from there. When he leaves, he looks at the guards, who inform him that Shancha has died. The mighty demon has consumed the powers of her. To proceed with the investigation, they move forward. But Yan Ran appeared suddenly. She has arrived here to arrest Hu Zai, whom she considers a prime suspect. As Kai Zio considers him a friend, he prefers to take him to court with him. When they leave, Cheng arrives and meets with Yan Ren. Yan Ren appreciates him. While reaching the court, Elder Master is about to punish him for the Shancha case. Yan Ren also plays his role by saying that Shancha meets with Huzi late at night, so he can be a culprit. Seeing this, Kai Zio clears the misunderstanding that the sorcerer has disappeared for a year. 
Therefore, Husey is responsible for this mess. Despite having the proof, they still consider Husey guilty. To wipe out all the allegations, he demands five days to show the real culprit. As a result, he was given three days to prove himself innocent. If he hasn't been successful in revealing the criminal, then they will consider Huzi guilty. Along with this, Kaizio is dismissed with the title of commander. Now, they have only three days to jump on the criminal. So, to figure out clues, they have decided to grab the proof through Shanch's body. Because the criminal has made a flaw by leaving her dead body behind. When they check Shanch's body, they find the horse's hair, which is not ordinary. Here, the teacher arrives and reveals its demon horse who is eligible to suck human essence. Rather, it's challenging to capture him. He can only be entangled by nine-tailed birds, and catching this bird is difficult. A teacher with vast knowledge about them can hand them a whistle to attract birds. By taking the whistle, Husey starts blowing, and the teacher snatched it from him, because it can attract flies. So, she whistles to the responsible person, Kaizio. In the morning, they set the trap to capture a nine-tailed bird, who is a divine one. Luckily, the bird has arrived by listening to the whistle. But Hu's eye becomes hasty in pulling the strings, and the bird flies away. Now, birds are not going to capture because they are smart enough not to get entangled again. Just then, Husey got an idea. He takes them to a hen yard and decides to turn this hen into a nine-tailed bird. On the hard, Mu Dan is waiting for Kai Zio, but he doesn't appear. Before she gets disappointed, a beggar arrives and gives her important information. After that, they are dying from hunger, so they move to eat in a luxury hotel. Here, they make the strategy through this, they can capture the horse demon. Through his connections, Kai Zio has spread the news of Nine Tails Bird's show. They know that Demon Horse can't control himself, and he will be there to capture the Nine Tail Bird and they need to make a proper plan to capture him. So, Zhao Xin will be there to change his appearance as a flower render, and Wang Yu will be responsible for keeping an eye on the suspicious person. In the end, Husey guards the back door so that he can't escape. At the show, everything goes according to plan. When the Nine-Tail Bird is shown then, an ordinary person runs to capture it. They have misguided and have captured him, but he is not the right person whom they want to catch. Just then, Husey looked around and watched a demon lord who was running away. Huzai rushes him to capture him, but his speed is extraordinary, and they are unable to capture him. It is their fault, they have warned him, and it's challenging to capture him. Later, they move to dine together and plan to do something. Just then, Du Man appears and says that the horse demon has a connection with the royal's personality. This is important information, and he wants to share it with masters. Husey opposes this idea, but Kai Zio doesn't bother to listen to him. He moves outside by asking them to wait until he returns. According to Kai Zio's command, Hu Zai tries to sleep, but he cannot and decides to meet with Du Man to get more clues. When he reaches the ghost market, he looks at the demon horse. He chases him, but the demon horse is vigilant. Demon horse hits him on his back and makes him faint. Later, he tries to extract human essence, but the tail protects him. At the same time, Mei Fairy arrives, and Demon Horse calls her master. She is behind this mess. Also, she has decided to wake up her power through Furba. To awaken his power, he needs to pass three exams. Aside from this, Zhao Xin is practicing when Kai Zio approaches him. While conversing, they figure out that Hu Zai is not there. They have started searching for him. In the morning, Kai Zio and his friends find Husey at their door and take him inside. Kai Zio examines him and figures out he is perfectly fine. In anger, Wang Yu is about to hit him with brick, but he has awoken. He shares the complete story, which has surprised everyone. Weirdly, the Demon Lord has left him alone. Like this video and let me know in the comments if you are excited for next part.